Hi, Gail. I, you just left your whole heart up here on the stage. <laughs> what a, um, wow. what a beautiful, vibrant um, group you are today. I love to see the different combinations of musicians that we have because it creates a new magic every time. So thank you, magical people, for uh, <laughs> wonderful music this morning. Good. When we were greeting each other, we were a little um, short on people, and I think it's because there are bicycles out there. <laughs> and uh, luckily, I had the heads up coming from Austin, so I came through dripping down 290 and 12. So I got here actually earlier than <laughs> than usual. So um, so thank you for um, braving the the interference to get here. Um, sometimes when I arrive here, I have not yet let go of my week to be able to come and talk with you um, as clearly as I would like to. But usually by the time I'm standing here, that has all um, melted away. And especially this morning, because everything that you've heard this morning so far is what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> Everything from the announcements to the gathering prayer. Thank you, Anne. I could have just, uh, you, you just had my sermon notes here. So um, body, of, body of grace is what we've been experiencing already this morning. Um, it's it's the, body, the body of grace. And it's the body of grace that we live in. So there's a double meaning to this, to this talk today. When I think about the work of Peggy, and I think about the work of Jan, and I think about the other artists that we're going to be um, enjoying in November, that's a body of grace right there, using hands and eyes and vision to be able to create beauty, to bring into being something that wasn't there before. And this morning, what was brought into being already is a sense of urgency to bring food to people who don't have enough. That's an act of grace. That's, that's where our giving graces us as it blesses others and is an act of grace to them. Um, our song, this song just now, was a gift of grace to us. And, and you described it beautifully. I was going to go into much more um, involved description of what grace is, but you said what it is. It is the love that God is already giving us, already lives within us. You see, I guess the, the biggest thing about grace is that um, 2,000 years ago or so, a man who was a Jew said, there's more to this living than just following the law, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And so we come from that tradition of uh, knowing that we live as people of God and the spirit of the Christ in us. And all the teachings that have come down in those 2,000 years have enhanced what we understand to be grace. That's the initial grace right there, is that we are spiritual beings in a human body. And it may not feel like it some days. I know many of you sitting out here have health issues, you have chronic pain, you have had close calls, you've gone through struggles, your heart is heavy, and yet we have the choice to be able to carry that with grace, and I see so many of you that do. I, I, know, I know a woman that's part of our community here who's in constant pain, and you would never know it because she chooses to see what is graceful about life. What is graceful about life? And so that's the way she lives it. 
So um, right now, the monarchs are migrating. Have you been seeing those beauties? And of course, my son, the scientist, um, with you know eyes that are 42 years younger than mine, boy, he can spot them. He can just spot them everywhere. And he informed me that the birds don't eat them because they're poisonous to the birds. So yay, butterflies. And <laughs> eat something else, birds. And so we have that. We have the, the gift, even if we can't see the butterflies, even if you're physically not able to see them or get out, you can know that they're passing through on their way to this incredible winter that they'll spend in Mexico covering trees that look otherworldly because they're covered by butterflies. What a beautiful world we live in. I went to a movie yesterday. It was an important cultural movie um, called Zombieland. <laughs> And it was really funny um, because zombies, I mean, and Woody Harrelson. And uh, what was really lovely, and I found this out from an employee at the theater, there was a man sitting on the front row that was laughing really, really loud, like... I thought maybe he'd had a little something-something before he came into the theater <laughs> and um, was enjoying the, the movie m more than the rest of us. Um, but I found out that he was mostly blind. He's hearing impaired. He sits on the front row so he can see as much as he can. He wears the hearing assisted, uh, assisted devices, and he doesn't know how loud he's laughing. So suddenly what had been an annoyance was a gift of someone's laughter, of someone truly enjoying themselves well, when you would think they could probably just say, I can't do movies anymore. He's still doing them. There's some grace for you. I experienced grace in my body in a whole different way this last week, and some of you know what I did. I've been telling you I'm going to go axe throwing. <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> and I nailed it. <laughs> and so I got to experience a fierce strength in my body, which is graceful to me. I wasn't graceful every time I threw. But, you know, when if you've ever played golf and you hit a good drive off the tee, you know, and it just makes that perfect connection, and you know that thing is going to fly, and then when you hit it wrong and it hurts, um, I could tell when I, when, I, when I released it. When I released it, I could tell if it was going to be a good thunk into the wood or if it was just going to bounce off. And so um, I discovered a new strength in my body and a new um, fun hobby. <laughs> I even have my own axe now. <laughs> so you know all this talk we've had about gun safety and everything? I got the solution <laughs> right there. Let's just strap it right here. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not violent that way. I'll just throw at wood. That's all, I'm gonna, that's all I'll ever throw at. I want to share with you, um, I, I talked about the teachings that have come down about grace. Um, I want to give you some from some of the original unity teachings. Remember that the grace of God is God's love in action. God's grace is unlimited and so wonderful that words can scarcely describe it. We can use such words as mercy, forgiveness, compassion, goodwill, kindness, inspiration, and generosity to describe God's grace, but they are hardly adequate to cover the fullness of its meaning. 
Grace is God's gift of love and mercy given freely to us whether or not we deserve it. We cannot steal, borrow, buy, or earn it. We can only accept it or refuse it. And uh, how many times do we refuse it? Because we've decided that we don't deserve it. Or because we're not looking for it. Or we think it's just a coincidence or an accident or a fluke. Or the God smiled upon us on a particular day. It's there all the time. God's grace is. It's there for you to breathe in your body. It's there for you to see in other people. It's there out there in the world in butterflies and in acts of kindness. The word grace is is synonymous with love. It's unconditional, impartial, and unsolicited. It is perpetually operative and fully accessible to all. There is nothing we can do that will increase its availability, but we can resist it by holding thoughts and feelings opposed to the nature of love or the nature of being. And we do that, don't we? We hold those thoughts and then we're um, um, surprised when things don't go our way. We're surprised when We just feel like everything is against us. New York Times Sunday Magazine, a couple of weeks ago, had this poem in it called Small Kindnesses by Danusha Lamaris. I've been thinking about the way When you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs to let you by. Or how strangers still say, bless you, when someone sneezes, a leftover from the bubonic plague. (laughs) Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to the person handing it. To smile at them and for them to smile back. For the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder and for the driver in the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other now so far from tribe and fire. Only these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwelling of the holy, these fleeting temples we make together when we say, here, have my seat. Go ahead, you first. I like your hat. So maybe grace is best experienced by us and given by us when we're kind. When we're kind and our hearts are soft and open and not hard and thinking the worst of other people or of life. There are so many beautiful words that are written about grace. I have so many things I could say to you and I know that last year I preached a whole month about grace so can't give it all to you this morning but I can give you a new perspective because we have grace in our breath we have grace in our movement even if it's limited we have grace in our embraces with each other we have grace in the way we look at each other that's the way we use our bodies as instruments as vehicles for grace And it's also the way we receive it. I know that um, one of the things that I taught my kids when I would hug them when they quit being little boys was they would give me a hug like this. And I'd say, two arms. (laughs) I still do that. Two arms, please. 
And two arms feels better than one. Those are gifts of grace because when they do that, I also feel them kind of sag into it. Not like they're, you know, oh, you know, oh my God. <laughs> She's making us hug her. <laughs> I'm sure that's what's going on in their brain. Don't tell them I said that that way. <laughs> oh my God. We have grace in our human connection. We have grace in our, I'll say, our six senses to experience God. That which is seen and unseen. We have the grace to live in bodies that trouble us as we breathe and we pray for living in spite of whatever we're experiencing. Let me share a little bit of Rumi with you. Be like the sun for grace and mercy. Be like the night to cover others' faults. Be like running water for generosity. Be like death for rage and anger. Be like the earth for modesty. Appear as you are. Be as you appear. Rumi always makes you think. What if we were the ones to be the sun for grace and mercy to shine. Give yourself up to grace. The ocean takes care of each wave till it gets to shore. You need more help than you know, said Rumi. Be watchful. The grace of God appears suddenly. It comes without warning to an open heart. I love these words. Limp along until your legs are spent and you fall flat and your energy is drained, then the grace of the divine will lift you up. You want to hear that again? Limp along until your legs are spent, until you fall flat and your energy is drained, then the grace of the divine will lift you up. In this mob of eyes inside. Which one is me? Hear me out. I know I'm wandering, but don't start putting a lid on this racket. No telling what I'll do then. Every moment I'm thrown by your story. One moment it's happy and I'm singing. One moment it's sad and I'm weeping. It turns bitter and I pull away. But then you spill a little grace and just like that I'm all right. It's not so bad, this arrangement, actually. I love that. I love that. Because how shall we live in this world that is um, chaotic and difficult and for whom we feel the pain of so many, starting right here in our own county? and extending to many places around the world. How shall we bear it if not for grace? How shall we bear it? You know, um, one of the descriptions that I got of grace is that it, um, it uh, is bigger than karma. And, yeah, think about that. I just kind of laid that out on you there, but I really want you to think about it. Because we say that so often. Oh, I did this. I did this thing this morning. And man, it came right back around and bit me. Well, yeah, that can happen. And uh, it had better make us laugh at ourselves. And uh, try to do a little better the next time. But do you know one of the biggest gifts you can give someone that you love is to say, there is nothing that you can do that will make you, me love you more. Try that again. There's nothing you can do that will make me love you more. And there's nothing you can do that will make me love you less. That's how it is with God in us. 
Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that we are not judged by anyone except ourselves? And sometimes by other people because we let them. Oops. <laughs> nobody, can, nobody can slam their judgment on us without our giving them permission. And when we see that happen, we can just say, oh, you know what? That's not acceptable to me because I live in God's grace and your judgment is of no consequence to me. What you think of me is none of my business? That one. That doesn't mean that we just run through life pell-mell and uh, uh, trod over other people's feelings. It doesn't mean that we get to act any way we want. If we're living a life of grace, if we're going to claim that life of grace, then we must do our dead level best to live it. That's what we're required to do. Is everybody else loving the sound of that baby as much as I am? Oh, man. Oh, don't clap. Don't, shh, don't clap. Shh, 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 shh. Don't wake up the baby. Oh, hey, Indiana. It's just such a wonderful sound. It just makes me calm to hear that baby. <laughs> so we're just going to pray calm all through the night for the fins. Are you getting any sleep yet? A little. A little. Oh, yeah. You know when they say a little, that means no, not any. <laughs> not any at all. There's a beautiful prayer I want to share with you here, my friends, as I'm bringing us to a close here. There's so much I'd like to say. What I'd like to know is, just to check in with you, are you feeling a little more relaxed? Are you feeling a little softer? Are you feeling a little more willing? I learned this prayer many, many, many years ago, and I've shared it with you before. It's a grace prayer that was channeled by one of my teachers when I first got into Unity. And I love it so much. For thee I thirst. Into thy hands I commit my spirit, my soul, my body, my life, this problem, all unforgiven states. Thy will is my will. Thy will is done through me. Heal me at depth. Reveal that which needs to be revealed. Heal that which needs to be healed. So I can glorify you, God, and live in the fullness of grace. It is finished. That means I let go. I prayed this prayer. Heal me at depth. Reveal that which needs to be revealed. Heal that which needs to be healed. Because we're here to show what it looks like to be God. Do you remember how much trouble Shirley MacLaine got in trouble for all those years ago when she declared, I am God? And now we can sit all here together and say, yeah, we are. We are. Thanks, Shirley. Because that's who we are. That's what we're doing. We're being God on earth in our unique and individual way. And I would just say to you, if you still have doubts about grace and about your purpose here and about these teachings, you need to get over it. <laughs> because how dare you unique creation of God think anything less of yourself than God thinks of you not as some judgmental guy not as another being but the allness that is everything that which created you judges you not how dare you judge you so that's something you could kind of pay attention to this week when you get down on yourself? 
Here's some homework for you. Make a list of as many negative attitudes and thoughts you can remember having during the day. <laughs> Write out an affirmation of graceful truth that will replace each negative remembrance. Meditate on each affirmation with feeling. That doesn't mean with your teeth clenched. <laughs> Make a list of the actions and attitudes you've had during the day that insist on even exchange. <laughs> what attitude or action could you have engaged in that would have eliminated even exchange and called forth grace? Write the grace attitude or action and visualize yourself redoing and rethinking from the consciousness of grace. Yeah, well, I did this for you, so you know you think that. I'm looking over my glasses at y'all. <laughs> Haven't you done something, and then when somebody was ugly, that same person was ugly to you, you go, well, hey, I didn't, nee, nee, nee. and then you turned around, and well, that's this one that I just read. Make a list of all the ways you insisted on doing all the work today. Huh. Chuckles of recognition. Make a list of all the ways you could have accomplished the same work or perhaps even more work if you had been conscious that it was the grace of God within you doing the work. In your imagination, visualize God doing the work through you. Hmm. What a thought. Affirm every day, as many times a day as you can remember, thy will is my will. Thy will be done through me this day. Or you can say it any way you want to. God, what would you have me do today? God self, what's going to be the best expression of you today? At the end of each day, make a list of any feelings associated with this statement. Was there any fear? If so, write out what you know to be the truth about God's will. Reaffirm the statements of God's will being your will until you feel a deep sense of peace, joy, trust, and excitement about the will of God being done in your life. Would it be okay with you if you had peace, joy, trust, and excitement in your life every day because the will of God is working through you? Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Y'all did great. <laughs> so you could pick up your take-home test on your way out. Your take-home test is to imagine yourself being a person who lives in a body of grace, doing graceful things for other people and for yourself. And to remember that you are inside a greater body of grace that is always, always present, that is always, always loving, that is always giving more than you could ever ask for. <sighs> yes. So let's pray. As you breathe in, I want you to imagine that every molecule, every atomic particle that you breathe in is filled with the grace of the creation. Imagine that you are the fish swimming in the ocean. You are the human swimming in the sea of grace. There is no place in which grace is not. As that cold front comes in this evening, 
and you throw on that extra sweater, or extra blanket, or as you build a fire outside, or welcome this change in the weather. Imagine wrapping yourself up in grace. As you walk through your week, let your feet be feet that are landing on holy ground with every step. As you do those daily tasks, let that sweet prayer or mantra repeat, thy will is my will. Thy will is done in me today. Let your heart and your mind come together in a vision of life being a little bit easier. Because grace is your constant companion. During this last week, there were many of us here who had a sweet and long meditation. And then we walked our bodies of grace through the labyrinth and into the sunset. And this week, whether you can be here or not, know that your companions in this spiritual community will be here stretching and breathing and absorbing the vibrations of the universe for the healing, not only of ourselves, but for the planet. And let your heart join in, regardless of time and space. Keep breathing, beloved. Keep breathing. We're going to take just a moment of silence for all of this to become assimilated in your heart and mind and in your body, the grace of God. O oh, creator of all that is, all that ever has been, all that ever will be, we stand in this pinpoint moment in time and space, in your light and in your grace. Reveal that which needs to be revealed 
and heal that which needs to be healed so that we might be healed at depth. Surely we are one with each other and with all that is. And we are blessed. And the more we express that goodness that lives in us, that was born in us, the more and the greater our joy. For this we are grateful. We release and let go of everything else. And so it is.